Hey everybody, welcome to another YouTube series episode of Into the Breach. I'm James Purvis and with me I'm super excited. I've got Oran who is a CTO and distinguished engineer. In today's topic, we're going to cover DSPM for decision makers and we're going to go through uh, three different things that you should know uh, in general about DSPM technology. Oran, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to uh, be here. Absolutely. Well, great. So let's just get right into it. Um, you know, maybe some folks out there aren't very technical that are listening. Um, so let's start there. What what do non-technical people need to know about data security posture management? Yeah, so I think from a technical perspective, uh, what everybody should know is that DSPM solutions need to basically do or accomplish three things. Uh, one is to be able to scan the customer's data, and that's all of the data, including shadow data, the data that you, that you don't know about. Uh, second is they should be able to classify the data accurately and, and, and efficiently. Uh, and lastly, once the solutions uh, scanned and classify the data, they need to figure out who has access to this data. Yep, now that, that really sums it up nicely. Um, now in terms of just accessing customers' data, uh, what's so hard about doing that? Can't a customer just provide the credentials? Yeah, so that's a great question. That's actually one way of accessing the data is through the customer providing credentials and network connectivity and then to, to the live environment and then the solution can just connect and uh, scan the data. But the drawback of this method is that it, first of all, it impacts performance uh, because it hits the live data store. Uh, and second, it also requires scanning windows, coordinating everything, making sure that there is network connectivity in place. So that means usually VPN solutions and so on. So it gets really messy when it comes to the uh, broader aspect of, of data. If it's maybe one or two data stores, that's fine. But when you have many more, then, then it gets messy. Now, modern DSPM technology, on the other hand, relies on what we call out-of-band methods. So this means that we don't hit the live environment, but rather uh, some other way of accessing the data, which is not, uh, which doesn't require uh, all, uh, all of the requirements that, that uh, scanning a live environment uh, requires. And one of these entry points is, is using backups. And these are great entry points because, first of all, they don't affect performance. Uh, they just lighter so you can just access them, read the data, scan it, and so on. Uh, and they usually don't require setting up network connectivity and, um, and credentials and so on for each and every data store. Uh, so there are two types of backups that you can, that the DSPM solution can, can scan. One is just using an existing backup. And this means that DSPM solution should integrate with your existing backup solution. And then it can just uh, read the data from there. And the other option is uh, if, if this data store isn't backed up and so on, then it can also use ephemeral snapshots. So this means once a DSPM solution wants to scan or classify some data store, it takes a backup, then it connects to it, scans it, et cetera. And when it's done, it just deletes the backup. Got it, yep. And you mentioned earlier, you know, Nobody wants to impact production. That's for that's for sure. No one wants to slow down anything. Um, so great. So you know, once a DSPM solution has access to the data and then can scan it, uh, how does it do the classification? How does it classify the data? How does it know what is sensitive data? And you know, identify things like social security numbers, PII, medical records. Could you? dive into that a little bit more? Yeah, of course. So that's a major topic for DSPM solutions, actually. That's something uh, that is uh, heavily researched upon. Now, one method is through what we call regex engines. This is, uh, it stands for regular expressions. And it's basically uh, an algorithm for uh, doing pattern matching. So for example, uh, if there's an email address, then email addresses usually have a very unique pattern. So we look for these patterns and then we can say, this is an email address. Now, regex engines are very fast and very cost effective. Uh, but the problem is they can't discern mock data from real data. 
and are not that good at unstructured data solution, unstructured data classification. For example, if you have a patient visit summary, then um, some, some of the data types there uh, might not suit some pattern that, uh, that you, can, you can think of. Now, another method for performing classification, this is uh, some modern stuff, is, is using an AI-based classification. So it either use LLMs, large language models, such as ChatGPT and so on, or something that is using the same underlying technology used in LLMs, which is called transformers, which is an AI model. Now, AI models perform much better at unstructured data classification, but on the other hand, um, they are, uh, they quite, they, they're very mu more expensive, uh, much more expensive. Uh, and they also, you also get a bit lower precision because sometimes LLMs can hallucinate. This means that, uh, it happened to all of us. You ask, you ask ChatGPT some question and then you get an answer, which looks, uh, it makes sense, but it's not true. So mm -hmm. good DSPM solutions usually combine these two methods. Uh, first you use regex for the first level of filtering, for uh, parsing the files, for uh, extracting what seems to be sensitive data, and then they pass it into some AI-based solution. And then you get the benefits of AI-based solutions, but it's much more cost efficient. And also using reg access and other validation methods, you can also tackle the hallucination problem. And even though the LLM said this is sensitive data, you can perform an external validation to make sure it is actually sensitive data. Yep. Yeah. Accuracy is, is super important when you're talking about, uh, you know, discovering the sensitive data and labeling it. Uh, so, okay. Once DSPM solution classifies all the data, what do we do next? Yeah. So one of the most important things you need to do at this point is to connect the data to the identities that have access to this data. Uh, and this is key, uh, because one of the most important ways to reduce this, reduce risk to sensitive data and exposure and exfiltration is to minimize the access to it, to make sure only those that need the access have the actual access uh, without hindering the business operations. So modern DSPM solutions, they go beyond scanning the data. They also tell you who has actually access to it and help to control it. Yeah, well, so why can't I just use an access management solution then? Yeah, that's a great question. And traditional access management solutions, they only connect identities to some kind of like the resource, maybe it's the data store name and so on, but they don't connect it to the actual data residing inside. Uh, these solutions ingest a list of permissions. They can tell you an identity has an access to, has access to, for example, an S3 bucket, but they don't tell you which data resides in this S3 bucket. And this is where DSPM solutions come into play they provide you the data context. So um, instead of knowing that someone has access to some S3 bucket, you know that someone has access to this S3 bucket that has inside, for example, financial information. And this way you can make informed decisions. And I think this is a perfect example of how one plus one is equal, is, is greater than two. It's actually combining these two and then correlating the data with the identities gives you a much clearer understanding of uh, who has access to, to what. Yep. Yeah, that data context is critical for sure. Um, okay, this is awesome, Moran. I appreciate it. Uh, let me see if I can summarize these technological pillars of DSPM, and then you let me know if I, I, I've got it right here. So three core technologies are underlining DSPM. That's scanning customer data through... You talked about the backups, either integration with a backup solution or you're using temporary snapshots. The second is the data classification. And ideally in doing that by both combining regex and AI based technologies and then connecting the data classification or context with identities so that organizations can more efficiently minimize access to sensitive data, reduce that blast radius of potential cyber attacks. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, awesome. Well, great. Oran, thank you so much uh, for all the insights today. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.